Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Bucket Ponds. Today we are answering the age-old question of can you raise boogie worms in a jar aquarium? And that answer is yes. So for a little background on this tank, it was built way back in February of 2022, uh, roughly a year and a half ago. We used some uh, organic potting mix along with some, uh, I believe, play sand and uh, some marble chunks and some other materials in this aquarium. We planted it with uh, water lettuce, which did not work out, and we planted it with uh, spike rush and a few other small plants as well. So this jar was uh, <laughs> a lot of fun to build, and right after setup, I happened to notice these large worms here. I thought maybe some large earthworms have gotten into this project somehow. Maybe I scooped them up on my plants, but these guys actually came out of one of my oldest bucket ponds. Uh, these worms must have been down in the substrate of the bucket pond, and they came along with some of those roots that you see there. I was uh, intrigued by seeing them, and uh, so I had hope that they would do well, that they would survive in here, and that we would be able to check up on them again in the future. Well, it's been about a year, a little bit over a year and a half, and uh, here's the tank in the present day of August 2023, and it looks a little different than when it was set up. Uh, we have developed a bit of a mulm layer, and that's mostly from the feeding schedule. I feed these guys with a slice of cucumber uh, once a week. I've slowed down a little bit to about once every other week now. Uh, but the spike rush, the slender spike rush, that's that green stringy stuff you see there. It has done quite well, and it's an excellent filter for this type of aquarium. Our ostracods and paramecium and some of our other microfauna are very numerous in here, and they are thriving. They're doing very well. And they have also contributed to uh, the lack of algae in this aquarium. We have had some blue-green algae try to form in here, and our ostracods have consumed it directly. But we have also noticed these strange structures here. These white, pink towers poking up out of the sand and soil. And then we saw them dance. Yeah. So these are those same worms that we included in the build video. Uh, they were not put in here intentionally. They just happened to hitchhike their way on some plants. Uh, but these are boogie worms. At first, I thought maybe they were just an average earthworm, but these guys are definitely adapted to life underwater, and they use this motion to move water over their bodies. You see, they don't breathe like we do. They breathe through their skin. And in a jar like this, where there's no water current, there's no wind, there's nothing stirring up the water at all, so it's very still. And this motion here creates a bit of a water current. It causes the water to move around, to circulate, and this brings oxygen-rich body or oxygen-rich water over their bodies. This allows them to breathe. It's also a very interesting and somewhat creepy thing to watch. <laughs> uh, these earthworms, these aquatic earthworms, these boogie worms, if you will. They have gotten pretty large, and we're seeing about half of the worm here. This is their lower half that's extended up out of the substrate, uh, and it's doing this wiggling motion to help them breathe as they feed on muck and mulm and bits of detritus in the bottom of the jar. Now, these guys seem to get far more active with their dancing motion when I throw a piece of cucumber in here. I'll throw a slice of cucumber in the jar and it will sit for three or four days before the ostracods and the uh, paramecium and the other creatures start to break it down. And then that's when I see the boogie worms really doing their thing. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly linked or if it has something to do with the food available in the tank, but it definitely causes them to become more active. And I'm just so happy, you guys. I know we had a sad video last time, but I wanted to throw you something really fun and interesting. So we have succeeded in raising these worms and keeping them at least. But have they been reproducing in here or have they been simply surviving? That's what we're going to answer with this video. But as you can see, they are dancing up a storm. This is not sped up footage. This is just real life, uh, normal speed. And we have about a dozen of these worms in this jar. It's not a very large jar, maybe a half gallon. And uh, it's an open jar aquarium. It is not a sealed ecosphere. So this is a jar that I have uh, with a makeshift lid that allows air to pass into the jar. And I do feed them, as we previously mentioned. But uh, upon taking a closer look at the worms, we happen to see these little guys here. That's right. 
These are little baby boogie worms, and uh, they are dancing even more rapidly than the larger adults. I'm pretty sure that these guys are breeding in here. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, uh, then you'll know that I do raise several different worm species, namely a type of wild-caught tubiflex, along with some very small detritus worms. And these aren't either one of those types of worms. These guys are, in fact, baby boogie worms. It's possible that they might be a different species that doesn't get as large, but we've never seen them in here. And they are behaving and resembling the adults uh, exactly. So I'm pretty sure these guys are babies. I am almost certain that we have succeeded in breeding these boogie worms. Now, I cannot get a species ID for these guys. I can't tell you their Latin name or anything like that. All I can do is show them to you. Maybe an expert might pop up in the comment section. But these little worms are behaving in the exact same way. And uh, that has me uh, excited. We're going to include them in some of our future projects now that we have the ability to create more. And I look forward to seeing them in some sealed ecospheres and some other jar aquariums. But these worms get fairly large. And uh, again, if you're familiar with the channel, you'll know that I am testing black cow composted cow manure, which sounds disgusting, but I assure you it's not that bad. But I am testing that for its effects on jar aquariums, for ecospheres and other projects that we will build in the future. And I believe that once these worms get a taste of that black cow material, they will lose their minds, if they have any. But uh, I'm sure they will love it. That will give them plenty of food to eat, plenty of material to dig through and to munch on. I imagine that we can create a special culture for these worms uh, using that black cow material. So I will have to set up a new jar very soon. But I wanted to go ahead and do an update on this tank just to show you guys what's going on here. Uh, we do have a link to the build video in the description below, of course. And I was calling this the Pond in a Jar Aquarium. And I think that's very fitting. It's literally a pond in a jar. And it's quite nice, actually. We have had some blue-green algae try to form in here occasionally. Uh, mostly during the winter or right before spring. But our paramecium, our ostracods, or other small microfauna creatures... Uh, in one way or another, they seem to disrupt that cyanobacteria and they seem to consume it, uh, the ostracods uh, specifically. But uh, yeah, I'm just so happy with this tank. It's almost algae-free completely. And that's a big deal for a jar of water that's been sitting in indirect sunlight for a year and a half for, oh, I, I don't know, 13, 15 months, something like that. And uh, most times a jar like this will, you know, fill up with algae. I actually included some Nutella macroalgae samples in this project. And uh, even they did not succeed in getting started. But our <laughs> other plants, our spike rush specifically, has done very well, you guys. And we've made a lot of videos this year and in the past as well. I've been doing this for a few years now. But I can tell you that that stringy green stuff right there kind of looks like pine needles uh, tied together in little knots with roots on the bottom. That is slender spike rush, and that plant is amazing. It can survive any conditions that I can throw at it. It's tough as nails. It's easy to grow. Uh, it thrives in sealed aquariums, open aquariums. It seems to work well as a biofilter. Um, I haven't done any water changes for this project. I've never done a water change here. I've never had to. Uh, these worms are very healthy. They're quite large. They're some of my largest uh, invertebrates that we keep in these jar aquariums. And they are thriving. And it's pretty evident just by watching them dance. So I am thrilled, you guys. And, you know, we had a sad video last time, but uh, we have success and failure. And these things happen. You know, every one of these jars is an experiment. We're constantly learning and trying new things. Uh, we're evoking different methods and ideas from you guys, from other YouTubers, from uh, the fish lore forums, from Facebook uh, user groups, all kinds of stuff. Oh, and that reminds me, I am now one of the admins for the Ecosphere Enthusiast group on Facebook. So please look us up, check it out, uh, join the group if you're down with this stuff. Uh, I don't know everyone that's involved. There's a few hundred people on there, uh, but there's always cool Ecospheres and things to look at, people asking for help with identification and uh, all sorts of fun things. You can also find the Bucket Ponds group, the Bucket Ponds page, rather. Uh, the Bucket Ponds blog is what it's called, but it's on Facebook as well. I'll include a link to all this stuff in the description. 
Uh, but I hope you guys are having a great day. This is a much lighter video. We've succeeded in breeding our boogie worms. We're going to include them in our future projects. We're going to rebuild the wine jar, and I want to throw some of these guys in there. So please like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the video. Drop a comment. Maybe you're raising some of these worms yourself. And please check out the videos that are appearing on your screen now on the end cards. Assuming that I did not forget to put them in. <laughs> I forget sometimes. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon. This is Bucket Ponds. My name is Terry, and I am happy to share these parts.